Study more on Umaka Skavi. Study more about Umaka Skavi, you know? And study more on Umaka Skavi. Study more about Umaka Skavi, you know? And go and read and buy a book, Yake, The Philosophy and Opinions. It's very expensive. Those are the things in Tetangas. Let's have our own institutions. Publishing houses, it. Publish all of these ideas that people have here. Go away to and distribute them far and wide. Kaloma Zindia Bulela, my Africa, my Kama Queen. Dynamite comes in small packages. Inangela Pumet, the Venus of Hatis, Opuma West, Hilo, Hobang, Kunyama, Kungam Timkulu, a shine in the San Juan Obamba, but Hoban Pante Venteve, Tabatono, Tuela, Transa Masube, Hintabati, Sasu Kumaka Kamansi. And <laughs> Job of the same shilo, Elia would to put Tando, um, Sizzle in the best of Shungo Gakulu, Gota, and Egusho. Nanjalube Kulumangayo, but it shows you the strength of a man, and he understands the importance of the assignment in Amsanj. So we continue celebrating black excellence through young people that are excelling in business and calling upon on stage. One of those young people that are doing extremely well in business under the leadership or power in accepting the spiritual guidance by Imboni, Dr. Uzi Lezwe Khatebe. Now we are talking solutions. We're not only just talking about what was done to us, um, you know, dwelling on uh, the past. But the past is important, you know, as they say, isankofa, you know, in your nepege mover, to take that seed and the knowledge so we can be able to do better. So now we are doing better because young people are learning to sell. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So be proud of them because even people who work, they work for people who are selling. Every company is selling. When you're going to work, whatever you work, whether I'm office in that company is selling a service to somebody or they are selling a product to somebody. So technology can make young people to even sell easier but still perform better. One young person who's doing an incredible job in using technology, using the maximum, as much as they can to advance the youth business and how youth should use technology and other good means available to them for them to succeed. Mr. Amos Onyango. Before he comes on stage, I want you guys to watch the video, watch the amazing work that he's doing, watch the incredible impact that he's making in his community. And the Useso Mundomusha. I hope now Mundomusha, you are inspired by this amazing young man, Mr. Amos Onyango. Here's the video. Amos Onyango is the founder of Lowy Afric Technology Limited, a fashion label that is centered on instilling pride and patriotism in our African cultures. Through Onyango's love for his homeland, he established the Lowy Afric Foundation, a charitable organization dedicated to addressing human security and development issues. A certified academic researcher, Amos is an author of books such as The Predicament of Disempowered and Disengaged African Youth, as well as Twists and Turns, which is a story of survival, cyberbullying, and a crime against humanity. By profession, Amos is a cross-cultural communication professional trained at Heinrich Foundation. 
He is also a trained teacher, currently pursuing a Master of Arts in Ethics and Organizational Leadership at Tangaza University College in Nairobi, Kenya. He also obtained a Bachelor's Degree in English and Literature from the Kenyatta University. With an impeccable track record of leadership, Amos has worked as a project manager in organizations such as the PLO Lumumba Foundation, and he currently serves as the managing director of the Kukula Foundation. Adding to his basket of leadership, Onyango is the youth president of Destination Imagination Africa, DI Africa, an NPO that encourages young Africans to overhaul the oppressive educational system by becoming creative innovators and inventors. Onyango has received numerous awards, including the Lion's Den competition for young African entrepreneurs at the Economic Summit and the Africa Youth Icon Award in 2021. Onyango is passionate about the African dream, advocates for a self-sustaining Africa through locally produced goods and services, ideas and human resources. An individual who reveres the essence of Ubuntu. Unyango is of the sentiment that as Africans, we are the only race that tolerates every other race, but we are the worst in embracing our own Africans, and as such, we are our greatest enemies. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Amos Unyango. Amos Unyango. Thank you very much. Uh, I grew up in a very humble family. I lost my parents at the age of 12. But that is, a, that is aside. Uh, thank you very much for affording me this opportunity. Amongst millions of young Africans doing amazing things in Africa in, in diaspora. There is no better place to discuss the power of unity as Africans than right here in South Africa, a country, a country that went through the twists and turns of apartheid for nearly 42 good years. There is no better place to discuss the maximum use of technology to advance youth business than here in South Africa, a country that the like of Solomon Kalushi, a 19-year-old hawker from ghetto, was brutally beaten, tortured, and worse, executed. There is no better place to inspire the now, the now and the next generation than here in Cape Town. A city where a great icon, Steve Mbiza, inspired many young blacks by sharing knowledge without fear, without favor, and he started this at the University of Cape, Cape Town. But the question is, I would like to pose this to my fellow young people, are our forefathers and mentors like Steve Mbiza, Thomas Sankara, Patrice Lumumba, Samora Machel, Julius Nyerere, Steve Biko, Marcus Garvey, name them, are they proud of us? I don't need the answer because you have it. If Steve Mbiza was arise today to meet a young, to meet you as his mentee, will you be confident enough to tour around your village home and show him how you are using a solar energy to bring light to the community? Or you will show him a pile of certificates with degrees 
from different institutions bragging how you are a professor in agriculture. A professor in, agri a professor in agriculture who has never planted a single tree in his own village. Will you be bragging about how you are a medical doctor, a medical doctor who cannot even offer free health checkups or services to orphans and widows in a little village at KwaZulu Natal? Will you be bragging about how you are the how you are the best qualified civil engineer? Well, your grandmother's compound is bushy. Will you brag about being the best international seller hotels? Well, in your own village, you cannot afford to donate few copies of your books to the community, to the community libraries, or to support children that are less fortunate. Now, that aside, with 70% of Africans' population under the age of 30, is a clear indication that we are the pillar of Africa. How can it be that a continent with millions of young graduates upon graduation are desperately left with one major job of seeking jobs instead of creating jobs? I know my fellow young people will say, but we don't have capital. I want to challenge you today. Have you ever asked yourself how your mom or your grandmom managed to pay your school fee with the few runs she gets from selling tomatoes? I know some will argue that those were decades which generation is Habi Lame from Senegal, a 22-year-old born TikToker star who is now a billionaire without saying a word, just using technology, an African child. If you still doubt, there is one brother of mine who He's not here today. He's called Brother Osman Ture. He declined a scholarship to study in Canada. And instead, he opted to study master's degree in development studies in Rwanda because he believes we have the good institutions in Africa. He has now started an organization to empower young people in his village in the Gambia. I know that the majority would like to know that, would like to know what my, I'm doing for myself. Upon, upon getting mentorship from the PL Olumumba Foundation, and I want to say thank you to Professor PL Olumumba because he was here as the guest in the last memorial. He is the person who has made me to be the person I am today. And that clearly shows you the good example from my leader, Imboni, from the lady who has just spoken. We must begin to pass the baton to the next generation. If you are that jealous, if you don't want to pass the baton, who will take over when you are gone? Who will be the like of Thomas Ankara? So, I started a social enterprise called Lawi Africa, and you have seen. And it is African apparel clothing workshop in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, the pro, the, the produce, uh, we produce various fashion products for the African market. What I'm putting on is our products. So from the business, we have what is called Lawi Africa Foundation. We have Lawi Africa Technology Limited, which is the company. And Lawi Africa Foundation receive 45% of the proceeds that, that we get from, uh, from the foundation to train 
young, passionate people. So as we speak, the camp, we, we started the company three years ago. I've inspired and we have trained 100 young, abused men and women. And they are now able to be tolerant. Beside being an entrepreneur, I'm an author of three books, as you have known, and they were all said. But I want to challenge you back to history because history reminds us where we came from. In 1960, China was the poorest than most African countries. The four modernization pillars, industry, agriculture, technology, which I still stand for, that were introduced led to China reform that subsequently turned China into the world second largest economy. 60 years, 60 years ago, Korea was a poor nation. As we speak, now Korea is benefiting from modern health system, which some of the products come from here in Africa. <laughs> Dear Africans, the power is in our hands. We are not destiny to the servant of the colonizers. That is not the destiny of the blacks. And we have to change the idea because many of us are still operating in the concept. Why do we assume that if we run to their countries, they are going to offer us jobs? Yet they are having difficulties making jobs for themselves. This is why they are running in Africa. This is why they want a portion in Africa. Look at what is happening in DR Congo. Look at what is happening in Southern Amazonia. Why do you think they are invading Africa? The greatest problem that our colonizers are facing today and their, and their economies are facing today is that they are not even generating enough jobs for their own people. That is why they are stealing from Africa. That is why their system is not investing That is why the system is not investing in blacks. How can it be that as young, Ch how can it be that a young Chinese are busy making techno mobile phones in Hong Kong, and yet we young Africans are busy competing and bragging in buying their latest iPhones? How can it be? that we are posting the latest Mercedes-Benz made in Germany, assembled in Germany. We are buying bigger houses designed by Chinese. We have the best engineers in Africa. How can it be that we are ordering the latest designers' shoes and suits from Turkey, from India, from Italy. And I know majority of you have put on Italian shoes. Yet we can't promote Africans. How can it be that during the sports we celebrate Manchester, we celebrate Chelsea? We buy the jerseys from these European countries, a thousand pounds, dollars. But we cannot spend runs in supporting a young village girl struggling to, to make such kind of clothes. It is in Africa where some of us young people can afford to buy our friends bottle of whiskey, gin, beer, name them. But we can't afford to buy a packet of maize seedling or sanitary pads for the same friends. It is in Africa where some of us young people have money to travel abroad and watch UEFA live, but they can't afford money to support a little girl in Kaduna in Nigeria to come and attend this amazing conference. 
Now, what is our role as young people? What should we do? We should invest in sharing important information with the younger Africans. I want to give an example. If I'm the best website designer and there's somebody who is a tailor, why can't we collaborate together and the designer to design the website and the tailor to make the outfits? And then we share the proceeds. <laughs> that is what the Chinese are doing. That's why you see a, a Chinese is able to make a techno phone and there is somebody who is able to produce the software and there is somebody who is good at marketing. But in Africa, we are enemies of our own and we must begin to practice this. <laughs> we have lamented, we have written history, we have written books, we have documented so many things. And I think this is the platform to challenge fellow Africans who are listening to us today. That is enough of history. It is time to walk the talk. So fellow young people, no one will invite you to the dinner table. Let us invite ourselves to the table. <laughs> to our elders and mentors, this is the time to support young Africa with zeal. And when you watch the young suckers grow, please don't prune them. Water them, weed them, help them spread their shades. <laughs> now, I know I have two minutes. As we celebrate the eighth memorial of Mr. Steve Radebe, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my host, founder, and leader of the Revelation Spiritual Home. <laughs> African Voices and Dr. S. B. Radebe Foundation, Imboni. <laughs> and my good elder brother, uh, Kuleko. I hope I pronounced it right. <laughs> for, the, for the opportunity, because young people are rarely given opportunity. And let me tell you, that is what is bringing this continent down. That's why we have leaders who are sticking into power and they don't want to pass the baton. So we don't take it for granted. So I, I confirm that my heart and that of my colleagues are ready to work with African Eden Voices. And since it is an international organization of the voices and unsung heroes and heroines and all Africans, especially the marginalized, as I conclude, allow me to wish Dr. Uzwe Lezwe a happy birthday. are made by us and we just wanted to show you that <laughs> also allow me to sincerely thank my elder brother Kuleko the, the name is very difficult to pronounce but a good work is doing Uh, lastly, we are requesting to host the next annual commemoration of African ancient indigenous prophets, kings, academic ETC in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, 
I have heard what Imboni said in Eastern London, and I'm here to present that request. We will do it a proper presentation on this later on. Amandla. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Siabonga. Siabonga, a cool um, seven to more, Sabe Abawenza. Nemuzo me kulu mangati student iskaban. <laughs> Inspiring young man, incredible, amazing. He is one of the most um, blessed young people. Who has the situation so for you to be spiritually guided by Imboni, and for you to be mentored by the PLO. <laughs> you are sentenced to succeed. You are all sentenced to succeed. <laughs> 